we are at the end. I'm seeing what's happening. I see it so clearly. But Lord, I look at my heart and I know that I need something deeper, Father. And I look at our brothers and sisters. Oh, God of heaven. Oh, God of heaven. Please don't let anyone be comfortable in resting in simply a profession. Stir us. Agitate us, for Lord, there will be men who know every point of our truth and yet will be lost because they lack heart religion. Help us, Lord. Please. Guide my mind, Lord, that only your words will be heard. Abide with us, remove every distraction. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'll take your Bibles and turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 8. To the book of Hebrews chapter 8, and when you get there, let me know by saying amen. You have your Bibles, amen? Are you ready to study? In the book of Hebrews chapter 8, notice what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 8. I'm sure everybody here knows who that picture, who that man is right here. Anybody know who that man is? I didn't even have to tell you who that man was, did I? This is Albert Einstein. Anybody know what that is right there? E equals MC squared. This is not necessarily the theory of relativity, but relativity started this out and moved forward. And this is a theory that everybody was very familiar with. Am I right? What year is this? 1905. This is a theory. Albert Einstein figured this out. He discovered a theory that was very much apparent in nature. But something happened in 1945. Anybody know what happened? The atomic bomb. Was that a theory? You know what that was? And that was an experience, wasn't it? In 1905, there Albert Einstein discovered a theory that was impractical in 1905. They asked him. They said, how long do you think that you can use the atomic bomb or, this, or the uh, nuclear energy? And he said, he, he used an expression of something that had to do with birds, and he said, it's almost impossible for anyone to actually be able to use practically this equation. It's just an equation that was solved, but no practical insight. But you know something happened. They had been begin working on this there in Germany. And there was a German scientist who began working, and he figured out how to use E equals MC squared and make an atomic bomb, and he visited Einstein in America. Einstein was a Jew. He got away from the Holocaust, and he went to America, and his friend that was a scientist visited him and said, Einstein, you need to write a letter to the President of the United States because Hitler is getting ready to get the atomic bomb. This is history. All of a sudden, the, the men that was talking to Einstein said, no, man, it was a young student, one of his uh, young colleagues. He said, no, no one can solve this. He said, Einstein, I've already have tested it. Einstein said, what do you mean? That young scientist took out of his pocket the type of, uh, of element that could split at a very cheap rate this atomic bomb. And when he showed Einstein, Einstein said, what do you want me to write to the president? He knew immediately what would take place? That if Hitler had got the atomic bomb, you and I wouldn't be here like this today. Immediately he wrote to the president and he said, look, if we don't do something quick to understand the atomic bomb, we lose the war. They were in World War II. The war would have been lost if this had gotten to the wrong hands. And so this was theory. And those scientists began to work they begin to put everything on hold and they begin to work and work until in America they were the one racing to see who could perfect this the most. And there in the United States of America they perfected and the, the quickest this theory and use it in a bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Did it end the war? Did it end the war? Now my brother and sister, it ended that war. In almost a few short days, the war was over after they learned how to move from theory to an experience. And I believe that when we understand this, we will accomplish in a few short months what it has taken others years to accomplish. 
We will accomplish a great work in a little time when we move from theory to an experience. But my friends, we have an object lesson right here before us because something came to us in 1844. The theory of the strongest power known to man was given to Seventh-day Adventists in 1844, but it was only a theory. It was only a blueprint written on papers. Thy way, O oh God, is in the sanctuary. How long from 1905 to, to 1945? 40 years. In about 40 years, they had developed that a theory to an experience. And brothers and sisters, in about 40 years, when Jesus moved from the holy place into the most holy place, in about 40 years, man was learning how to move from a theory into an experience. And in 1888, he almost got it. They took that precious theory from out of the sanctuary and was getting ready to move in the experience of righteousness by faith where man would live in the sight of a holy God without a mediator and would not sin. He would rather die than sin. It was about to be exploded into an experience, but the devil got in through the alpha of apostasy. And God in this last generation, even though Satan has unleashed everything from the Alpha to the Omega of apostasy, today God is counting on you and I to move this theory to an experience so that the work may be finished. And whoever gets this secret, they're going to win the war. My brothers and sisters, we must see this secret tonight. And I'm going to suggest to you that the secret is in heart religion. Now look at what the prophet says, volume 5. 2004, look what the prophet says, so that you don't have to take my words for it. Volume 5, 575, let's read it together. It says, the great plan of what? Of redemption. As revealed in the closing work of these last days, should receive close examination. The scenes connected with the what? The sanctuary holds the secret. It says the scenes connected with the sanctuary above should make such an impression upon the minds and hearts of all that they may be able to do what? To impress others. It says, the, uh, uh, others, all, how much? All need to become more intelligent in regard to the work of the atonement. Every one of us needs to understand the work of the atonement, something in this work, but not just a general atonement. Look at what this says. It says, in regard to the work of atonement, which is going on where? Now, wait a minute. That's not the atonement that happened in 31 AD, is it? You see, my brothers and sisters, there was an atonement in the holy place, but there's an atonement of the most holy place. And the atonement of the most holy place is the final atonement. And men today are afraid of this. This evangelical new theology teaching has come in and made us think that the atonement ended at the cross. Why? To hide from us the secret of finishing the work. The secret is in this sanctuary. It says in the work of atonement. Look at what it says. It says, which is going on in the sanctuary above? When this grand truth. What grand truth is this? What grand truth? Come on, talk to me. What grand truth? The work of atonement that is going on in the sanctuary right now, in the most holy place. It says, when this grand truth is two things. What are the two things? Seen and understood. Is it enough to see it? No. We must see it, and then we must understand it. You see, you are a wayside hearer, and I'm a wayside hearer. If I don't understand, the seed doesn't go in. And so God says, we must see and understand. What must we see and understand? The work of atonement. Now notice now, it says, when this grand truth is seen and understood, those who hold it, what is the it? This great truth. This truth of the work of atonement that is going on in the most holy place, when this is seen and understood, those who hold it will work in harmony with Christ. They will do what? They will work in harmony with Christ. They will work in harmony with Christ, and what are they going to do? To do what? 
to prepare a people to stand in the great day of God and their efforts will be successful. They are going to prepare a generation that can go through the time of the investigative judgment, a time when judgment passes from the dead to the living, and they will rather die than sin because they have seen and understood the work of Jesus in the most holy place of heaven's sanctuary. They understand what he's doing, and they've moved from a theory into an experience, and it says, look, they will see their own defects. They will see also that they must have the aid of what? Of the Spirit of God. My friends, we need the Holy Spirit like we've never needed before. We need to be earnestly pleading for God because I believe that the object of the sanctuary is to lead us into a heart religion. Do you believe that? Let's see what the Bible says. Hebrews chapter 8. In the book of Hebrews chapter 8, and when you get there, let me know by saying amen. All through the book of Hebrews, God has told us, you know, it's amazing, that we can get so fascinated with all the different points of the sanctuary that we miss its great objective. You know, if a man that you love, somebody, maybe your husband or your wife or your brother, your sister, was in a terrible accident and they got hit by a, a car and they're laying on the ground almost dead and the ambulance comes and picks them up and all of a sudden take them to the ambulance and then they start saying, well, you know, we've never been through this side of town, so let's go through the scenic route to get to the hospital. No! Get them to the hospital! No! Go the quickest way into the hospital. And you know, I find it, we're looking at the crisis, and I'm going to show you. This crisis is almost here. Just a few short months to a few short years is developing, and you and I are going through the sink route. Now, what cur color were those curtains? How much numbers can we count? We are so interested in num numerology and the study of numbers that we don't understand that God is seeking through the numbers of the 2300 days and all of those numbers to lead us into an experience. And my brothers and my sisters, listen, we must understand what God is moving for. And in Hebrews, that prophet under divine inspiration tells us from chapters 1 through 7, he's going through the history of the sanctuary. He's going through the work of the sanctuary step by step. He's going through in detail everything. And man will read every other book about the sanctuary, but all I want to know is what the prophets say. Chapter 8, Hebrews 8, beginning in verse 1, what does the Bible say? Now of the things which we have spoken of, this is what? What does that mean? This is the sum. In other words, the apostle Paul is saying to make it simple. If you didn't understand, if I, I don't have time to go through chapters 1 through 7, but this is what I was trying to explain from chapters 1 through 7. This is it. What is the purpose of the sanctuary? In Hebrews chapter 8, verse 1, it says, Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a what? A high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heaven, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and what? Oh, no, this is not the earthly sanctuary. Thy way, O oh God, is in the sanctuary, not simply on earth, but the one in heaven. What do you say? Now, he goes on to say, verse 3, verse 5, These priests in the sanctuary, says, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacles, for saith he, that thou make all things according to what? According to the pattern which was shown thee in the mount. Well, what was the purpose of that sanctuary? Verse 6. But now he have attained a more excellent ministry. But how much also he is the mediator of a what? Of a what? Of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. Well, what is this better covenant that was established upon better promises? Verse 10. Verse 10 says, For this is the covenant. And I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. Would you read it with me? I will put my laws where? Into their minds and will write them where? In their hearts. This is heart religion, my friends. He's going to take that law. Tell me, what was the heart of the ancient sanctuary? What was the heart of it? 
It's centered in the most holy place. Well, what was so special about the most holy place? It was the ark. Well, what was so special about the ark? That law of God. And the Bible says 